The best thing about Performance Max campaigns is that you can use one Google Ads campaign to show your ads across all of Google Ads different networks, including search, shopping, display, Gmail, and YouTube. However, the problem with Performance Max campaigns is the limited amount of data that you see and the limited amount of optimizations that you can make to improve the performance of your campaign. So right now, if you are facing the issue of rising costs in Performance Max campaigns, but with no conversions, the good news is, is that there is a simple optimization process that you can put in place in your Performance Max campaigns so that you can start to lower those costs and also increase the number of conversions and the ROAS that you're getting from your Performance Max campaigns. And I know that the process I'm about to take you through works because I saw that over just a four week period of implementing this optimization process, we improved the performance of a campaign with a cost per conversion of over $24 and brought that down to $12. And in the same time, we saw their ROAS increase from 4.5 all the way up to 9.6. So whichever way you look at it, that is a massive increase in performance in just a four week period. But before we discuss this simple optimization process that you can use in your Performance Max campaigns, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads Master. Now to make sure that this optimization strategy that I'm gonna take you through will be successful in your own Performance Max campaign, the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you've actually got your Performance Max campaign set up in the correct way. And to help you with this, I wanna give you my free Performance Max campaign setup guide. And to get your free copy today, all you need to do is to follow the link in the description below. This Performance Max optimization strategy and process that I'm about to take you through will work best on e-commerce campaigns that have at least 50 different products. So it doesn't matter how many products you have, even if you've got hundreds and thousands of different products, but I have found that it does work best with campaigns that have quite a lot or quite a few different individual products. And what this strategy is all about and what these optimization steps look to do in your Performance Max campaign is to overcome the common problem that we're seeing with Performance Max campaigns right now. And that is, is that the Google algorithm will focus the spending for their campaign on the highest volume products, even if these products have the worst performance in terms of the number of conversions and the ROAS or the conversion value that it generates for your business. Now, this is also a problem that can happen in shopping campaigns, but we can easily overcome this in shopping campaigns just by adding in some extra negative keywords or by segmenting your products into different ad groups or campaigns. But this strategy does not work for Performance Max campaigns. Now, before you jump into the comment section and say, Aaron, you know you can add negative keywords in your Performance Max campaigns with the help of your Google rep. Yes, that is true. But the issue with this is, is that Performance Max campaigns also target via the URLs. So even by adding in those negative keywords, Google will still go through and optimize these products because they're in your product feed. And then further to that, if you even do separate these products out into different campaigns or different asset groups within the same Performance Max campaign, the issue still arises. And that is because the way that Performance Max campaigns work is that I've found they will always revert back to the highest spending impressions because they always revert back to the products which have the highest search volume. And this comes back to the way that Performance Max campaigns work in that they're targeting broad match keywords. So there's no real limits that you can put to stop that. So because of this, in order to see success with your Performance Max campaigns, we need to take things a step further by actually excluding products from your feed in Google Ads. Now I know that this is a drastic step to take, but as we've said before, the other options of adding in negative keywords or by putting these products into a separate campaign or asset group just won't cut it when it comes to Performance Max campaigns. So right now, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you how this process works and also take you through the exact metrics that you need to be looking for before you exclude any products. So quickly before I take you through this process, I just wanna show you the week by week increase that we saw in this campaign. So starting in July, you can see that we had this ROAS or a conversion value cost at 3.5 and a conversion rate of 3.5%. Then moving to the next week, 
July 25th, we increased this conversion value score up to five and the conversion rate to four and a half or 4.6%. Then fast forwarding a couple of weeks to the 8th of August, we saw that we had increased this conversion value cost up to 8.94 and that conversion rate had gone up to seven and a half percent. And then moving forward another week, so the fourth week of this campaign, this conversion value cost or the ROAS was now above nine with a conversion rate of nearly seven and a half percent. So that's a big increase in a four week period from where we were at three and a half percent and a conversion ROAS of 3.5. So we've seen both of those metrics double. So now I wanna take you through the process and the metrics of what we did. So firstly, what I wanna show you here is what you need to be looking at is you need to be looking at your cost, also your conversion metrics, so your cost per conversion, conversion value cost, conversion rate, and then you need to also include your impressions. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go through and you wanna filter your product feed through costs. And the way that you navigate to this is that when you're in your Performance Max campaign, go into your listing groups and this will show the individual feed. Now I just took on this account back in July. So what we firstly had to do is we had to add in some subdivision so that we could see all of these individual products. So you can see this first week, we had all of the impressions going through this one group. So we firstly added in that subdivision. And the reason for why we did that is that while we were getting some good results in this actual subdivision, there was a whole heap of other products which are underperforming and you can see the total conversion value cost was at 3.5. So when we then came to the next week and we started to see all of these individual products, what we could see here is that we could see that a large percentage of our spend over that seven day period was coming from this top line product. Now this conversion value cost at 2.5, it's fairly low, but it's not terrible. But the big issue that we had here is that you had over 19,000 impressions in just a seven day period. And this was taking the vast majority of the budget. So we excluded this and then also went down through our other products and excluded any other products where we're seeing a high number of impressions for a low conversion rate and a low ROAS score. So then moving across to the next week, you can see by filtering out that product, we saw a straight bump and a straight increase of this conversion value cost and conversion rate. And the reason for that is because this previously high spending product was removed which then allowed more budget for these other products, which wasn't getting the same traffic volume, but they were converting at a much higher rate. And then taking it even further, we were able to exclude some further products to where we are now, with the conversion value cost at just under 10, and that conversion rate at just under 7.5%. Now moving forward, we're gonna to continue to go through this process. So what I want to take you through now is the metrics that I look at in order to, to make a decision as to whether we should exclude a product. And the biggest thing that you wanna be looking at is you wanna be looking at the number of impressions. And the reason for why this number of impressions is so important is because we know with the Google algorithm that it needs 5,000 impressions over a 30 day period in order to complete its split testing. So that's why it's important that you break this out into individual products. So once you've got your product feed broken out into individual products, you can then just go down the line of your products and make this decision. So when we're looking at here, these top three spending products, we're happy with these ROAS scores and these conversion rates, so we don't wanna exclude them. But when we start getting lower and lower down the line, so if, for example, these products here, although they've got no conversions and no conversion rates, we've only looked looking at two and a half thousand or 300 or 700 or 800 different impressions. And we just don't have enough data yet because for example, you can see right here, this camp product's only got 10 clicks. It's had one conversion and this conversion value cost has skyrocketed. So that, that data is a little bit skewed at the moment. And that's why we don't wanna exclude these products yet. So the core thing that you need to remember is that we're wanting to go through and review this on a weekly basis. If you're not getting that much data, you can expand this out to 14 days or 30 days. And what you're looking for is you're looking to exclude products which have a high impression and high spend with no conversion metrics. And if you do find a product like that and you want to exclude it, obviously we're not going to be excluding this high performing product up here, but all you need to do is click on the drop down and click exclude. So remember that first important step that we need to take take to optimize your performance max campaigns is to add those subdivisions so that you can see all of the individual data for your individual products. Then once you've got that data, you need to go through remembering that we're wanting to see 5,000 impressions over a seven or 14 day period before we can make those decisions as to whether we want to exclude 
or keep that product in the product feed. And by going through this process of checking the individual performance of all of your individual products and then reviewing the results by the number of impressions, remembering once we hit that benchmark of 5,000 impressions, what you are doing is you're carrying out the same process as what you do when you complete a search term audit. But rather than adding in negative keywords for keyword themes that are underperforming, with Performance Max campaigns, we're excluding products that are underperforming. And this is the best way that you can go about ensuring that your Performance Max campaign is targeting the products which are not only gonna generate the most impressions, but are gonna generate impressions and get you those valuable conversions at the conversion metrics which you're aiming for. So whether that be a low cost per conversion or a certain ROAS. Thank you for joining me. And once again, remember, if you wanna stay up to date for whenever I release a new Google Ads training video, all you need to do is to subscribe and also turn on that notifications button so that you know exactly when I release a new Google Ads training video. And finally, remember, if you wanna download your free copy of my Performance Max Campaign Setup Guide, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description. And if you'd like to see a teaching video where I go through this step-by-step -step process in how you can set up your very own Performance Max Campaign, just go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me. See you next time.